Hi and welcome to a little breakdown for the tree, uh, the free tree file that I'm giving away. Uh, this is a little teaser for an upcoming asset pack that I'm creating, which is a tree asset pack, of course. I'm really excited for it. I've worked really hard on um, making this very, very flexible and uh, tweakable as an asset. So I'll give you a quick run through of how uh, it's all set up and how to tweak the settings and stuff like that. So for the tree, the material is one um, master material that's got a switch for the leaves and the branches. So I've got the, the leaf stuff up here and then all the, the branches and trunk here, all the wind and textures, stuff like that, and it's just a switch. So if you uh, create material instances yourself, you set the switch based on uh, whether you're using leaves or trunk stuff. So for the settings themselves, I'll start with the, uh, the wind because each uh, tree has the same base uh, instance. So I've created a material instance just for tweaking the wind and then the leaf and branch instances I've made are on top of that. So here are all the wind parameters. We've got the bend bias. So you can you know, define how, how much the branches bend in the direction of the, uh, of the wind. You've got the noise for the, uh, the branch wind itself. So it's a noise that sort of uh, modulates the amount of wind. I'll increase the maximum branch rotation to give an example of that. So you can see the noise running through it there, whereas if I set it to zero, it's more sort of like that. So I usually keep these rotation values to pretty small. Uh, we also have like a max trunk rotation, which does the same thing. And then the speed of the branch uh, wind and then the speed of the trunk wind, so it's how fast they blow. That's uh, pretty straightforward. And then the strength of the uh, wind direction, how much the wind is biased in favor of its direction. And here's the wind direction here. It's all normalized, so you don't have to worry about having it. Um, have a unit length of one, but you just uh, yeah, let me increase the trunk rotation to give you an example. So you can see it just bends in the direction of the the wind vector there. All right, and basically once you've set up the wind, you make an instance of the uh, wind settings, and then you can. Uh, tweak the leaves and branches. Uh, and I've already set up a bunch of different materials here for you to play around with. So let's play with this one. We've got a bunch of settings for the leaves. We have the color distribution type. So there's one and two. I've just made it a checkbox. And this is um, the first color distribution is a ramp along the height of the tree. And the second is almost like a noise, but it's a per branch sort of variation. Um, and you can also invert the color distribution. Then you have like a cull culling amount, which will delete some of the leaves. And the power of that culling amount as well. And then you have the, uh, the alpha channel here. You can change the alpha for the leaves. You can add your own, anything you want. Then you have the uh, color atlas. And the color atlas is a ramp, very simple ramp. And you can, you're more than welcome to make your own to fit your needs. And what that does is along this value here, which is the color distribution, it's just a little uh, color ramp that uh, modulates the color. So you can sort of create any any ramp that your heart desires and in combination with the subsurface color here it sort of 
adds a lot of uh, variation that you can get from the colors. I'm really enjoying playing around with this sort of stuff. Then we have um, this color atlas picker is just linked to this, so ignore this value, it just populates by default. Um, you have the roughness for the leaves, just the, the PBR value, and you have the specular as well if you want to play around with that. I leave it at zero and I leave the roughness at one for my purposes. You have the scale of the leaves, so all of the leaf textures are set to uh, clamp, if I can find that to show you. Uh, the X and Y axis tiling method is clamp, which means that when it's tiling, it will still only have one texture. It won't tile when you shrink the, the UV. So because of that, what that lets us do is uh, scale the leaves as well in the material. So you can, you know, for cherry blossom sort of thing, you might want your leaves or blossoms to be like small, that sort of thing. Or you can just set it to zero to completely have no leaves. Uh, and you can combine it with the culling to sort of create, you know, autumn leaves that the, the leaves may have been falling off, that sort of thing. So there's quite a lot of flexibility combining all these settings together. And then you have the uh, wind intensity of the leaves. And this is independent from the other wind. This is just a uh, sort of like a jiggle. It doesn't have a direction. But uh, you can sort of increase the intensity based on how uh, intense you make your wind for your trunk and branches. And you can sort of you know, make that all match up. And then there's the Z intensity of the wind as well, which I have separated out just to uh, give more control over the direction that the leaves move in. And that's it for those leaves. Uh, with this atlas picker, if I uh, navigate to where the color curves are, we have a color atlas over here. And what this is, is just a container for all these curves. And you can just sort of add as many as you want. And then if you create another curve, you add it here. And what that's going to do is then let you uh, use that new curve in the material as well. So if you create another color curve yourself mm -hmm. and want to add it, just make sure you add another slot in the uh, in the atlas. All right, and then the the trunk slash branches material. Uh, it's a little similar to the leaves in that it has a color curve that is based on this uh, texture here. So this texture drives the color and you have a curve that's, uh, again, changing the color based on that texture. And what that allows is uh, quite a lot of variation in the trunk texture for little cost or little uh, effort. So you can create all the, all the curves you want. I've included three. Uh, we have a darker one, a sort of light brown, and then a more white one. And I think this yeah, provides quite a lot of flexibility. And you have the uh, tiling for the texture itself as well. You can sort of change that to suit your needs. It's a tiling texture, so you don't have to worry about um, having it fit to the specific UVs or anything like that. It's just going to tile. Uh, again, you've got your wood roughness and specular values here. And um, all of the wind stuff, it inherits from the base instance, which uh, it's an instance of that instance. So you set all your wind in the base, and then set your color and uh, shading values in the leaves and branch uh, materials, and then leave these unchecked. All of the uh, wind parameters themselves, you can make them if you want into like material collection parameters so that you can have a global wind sort of defined in a blueprint or something like that. So you could take all of these and make them into a uh, material collection parameter and then you could drive it all uh, from one blueprint. I haven't done that here for the sake of uh, this asset but I will in the asset pack.
And that's pretty much it for the breakdown. It's all pretty straightforward, I think. Um, shouldn't be too hard to, to have a play around with and come up with your own variations. Uh, feel free to add your own textures. Uh, there's a wind noise for the um, branch branches as well. That's just a really basic clouds that I exported from Substance uh, and blurred a little bit. But you can change all that sort of stuff yourself. So yeah, feel free to use these assets um, however you want. If you are using it commercially, just give us credit. Um, Horikami or Christian Kebby, my name. But uh, have fun with it and yeah, let me know what you think and I'll let you I'll keep you posted on the asset pack that's coming in the future. I'm aiming to have somewhere between 20 and 40 trees with multiple different species. Uh, and I'm really excited for for making that and getting it to everyone. Yeah.